So welcome to the rebroadcast of the Central Iowa Linux Users Group. Unfortunately, due to technical difficulties, uh, the actual recording of the meeting failed. So welcome to LUG. Uh, hello if you're watching. Uh, we tried to record it, but it didn't work out well. Do you have any thoughts of how things are going? Any ideas of future pro uh, topics? Just let me know. Uh, best way to connect with us is uh, CIALUG.org, which is our website, and using our uh, email listserv or Slack and IRC, which are bridged together. A little bit about me. I'm uh, a slinger of code by day, and by night I still end up doing computer things every once in a while. Uh, usual provisos that my actions are my own, not those of my employer. I have a website. Don't go digging into my Twitter history, but other than that, yeah, I'm also the president of the LUG here, and if anyone's interested in running for office, please let me know. In Linux news that's happened here, uh, Python 3.8 was uh, released, so yeah, new stuff. PyPy 7.2 was released. It's way behind Python, uh, normal Python. There were a bunch of security updates. Yeah, update things, please. Uh, RMS and GNU, there's a lot more drama. Yeah, enough said. And also some other cool features. A big note was the pseudo security bug. Uh, I kind of like to call it sudo, but uh, basically if you have a non-standard uh, configuration where a user can be any user except for root, you can also be uh, user minus one and uh, then still be root. Oops. So on to our main presentation, CentOS 8. It's finally here. So now begins the search for CentOS 9. Well, what the heck is CentOS? It's uh, essentially Red Hat, but free, as in beer. Uh, legally speaking, it's not Red Hat, but it's sponsored by Red Hat, governed by them, uh, written and used by mostly them. So yeah, uh, but there is no support. It's always just a little bit behind because they have to strip all the Red hat -y bits out. And it, you can't get a certification saying that you know CentOS like you know Red Hat. But they're the same, so whatever, it doesn't really matter. So if I do upgrade to CentOS 8, how long do I have? It will be supported until May 2029. If you're on CentOS 7, you have till 2024 till you have to consider updating. CentOS 6, the end is nigh. Uh, you have till November 2020, so about a year out now. Coming soon also, there is CentOS Stream. It's basically the latest greatest with updates multiple times a day. Of course, you shouldn't use it for production, at least officially and think of it as like a system that's after Fedora but before uh, actually Red Hat. So there'll be new features, new changes, things may break, but it's less likely to break than uh, after than Fedora software will. But the good news is the old CentOS that we know and love isn't going anywhere anytime soon. <clears throat> so the big things that have changed it's a fairly old Linux kernel of 4.18, but, you know, it is stable. Yum has, uh, is slightly modified. It's now based off of DNF Yum, which stands for Dandified Yum. Supposedly it's faster, better, but still completely compatible. Updated versions of Git, Mercurial, Subversion, etc. For those who are still using Subversion, Python 3.6 is now the default, but it's not auto installed. You have to install it if you really want it. But 
you still do have the option of using Python 2.7, but really, it's end of life at the end of the year. I'd really recommend moving off of it. There's all sorts of fun web stuff, Node, PHP, all updated. GCC is now uh, version 8.2, which there's a whole bunch of new C++ stuff that you can do. Databases are all up to date. Uh, GNOME 3.28, Wayland is by default. You can still use Xorg if you need or want it, but I mean really Wayland is the way of the future. Might as well start looking at updating. Uh, networking, there's some gotcha th there. Uh, they've moved to NF tables to replace IP tables. Uh, should be fairly compatible, but test your stuff. Also of note, there is no Docker in CentOS 8, and that's okay. We'll talk about it here in just a minute. So, Docker has problems. Uh, there's a daemon that runs as root. I'm waving my hand and ignoring the rootless Docker for right now and it's responsible for everything. That causes problems because it's a single point of failure. If your Docker daemon dies, all of your child uh, containers do die or get orphaned. There are also security issues. If there's a problem with the Docker daemon, that's a real attractive way to get root. And the good news is Podman sort of uh, steps aside and uh, interacts directly with the registry and storage instead and doesn't need to run as root. It also has the ability to uh, interact with the kernel via the run C process so you don't need that root daemon. But it is at least allegedly compatible with Docker. You should be able to just alias Docker to Podman and everything will be fine. So this does sort of show how Podman does all the interactions directly rather than your traditional CLI docker that interacts with the daemon which then does everything for you. So what's the good news of Podman also? It has added convenience uh, features and nice to haves. For example, uh, you can do double dash r or double dash all if you want to do remove or remove image. Uh, you can run it rootless essentially by default. It stores uh, your containers in the local shares containers of your home. Uh, the local repo is stored, stored in containers, which is the new open container initiative uh, standard rather than varlib docker and also the images are compatible. Uh, you can store them wherever you like, Docker Hub, Quay.io, which is Red Hat's GitLab, or you can stand up your own if you really want to. You just need to set up your registries in registries.conf. By default, it hits Docker Hub first since that's the one everyone knows and loves. It also does make uh, moving to Kubernetes easier because you can do uh, podman generate kube and you'll have uh, your uh, Kubernetes configs all generated for you. So a little bit of uh, demonstration here. Uh, the first one will be showing uh, that uh, Docker is drop-in compatible. All you have to do is uh, just run, uh, uh, first of all, we'll see here that uh, the version of Podman and you see it runs just fine. If I try running Docker can see it's not installed, but it does uh, offer to install the package Podman Docker, uh, which basically just aliases to Docker. And here we are seeing the new uh, yum install. So if I run docker-v, 
you can see that it's emulating uh, the uh, CLI using Podman. So the next uh, example here will actually run some uh, commands using that Docker-like interface. And this is just sort of the hello world uh, container which uh, just sort of says cheers if you can't read the ASCII art. And really it's just that simple. And you can see if we swap out Podman, it works again just as we'd expect. No big earth shattering surprises here. So Builda, uh, Podman build does work, but Builda is a little more uh, powerful. You can use uh, Bash scripts to build images, sort of like how we write Docker files, and you can uh, group multiple commands into one layer a lot easier. This unfortunately is a little out of scope to dive too deeply into this, uh, that we can spend an entire another month on that presentation. So you might be wondering, here I am sitting at CentOS 7 or 6, I want to upgrade and I don't want to have to reinstall everything. So how do I do that? The easy answer is you don't. Why? Uh, the official answer is no one really cares enough to put in the work to make the upgrade path work. Red Hat does have some migrations, they're very limited, but those are not supported for CentOS and essentially they're not going to uh, work on it. So if you really do care, you can do the uh, whole world a solid by uh, making the update uh, leap app uh, scripts, but it doesn't look like anyone's going to do that. There is one guy who uh, sort of documented his journey from CentOS 5 to 6 to 7 to 8. Uh, it's really not standard. Make sure you have your stuff backed up if you're going to go down that route. And yeah, it's you're going to have a bad time. So the install process, it looks pretty much just exactly like CentOS 7. You can tell that uh, Red Hat really didn't put much time or effort into making things look nice. It's a corporate operating system, so nobody really cares uh, how ugly it is. But you can see it's pretty much your standard install. And here we are at the, what language are we speaking? Of course, we'll go with English US uh, today. And it was fairly straightforward. You just had to select, uh, for example, uh, where your installation was coming, what sort of uh, software did you want to install, where your time zone was, networking, and all of those. Of course, we'll go for Chicago since we're here in Des Moines. And just had to say that we wanted the uh, Ethernet turned on. This was really nice because you can select, okay, I want a workstation, and then even pick out some rudimentary software. For example, I want Office Suite, which is LibreOffice, and development tools, etc., which is nicer than, like, say, Ubuntu or uh, Debian, where it's sort of a you get everything or you don't. Other options here are virtualization, hosts, uh, just a server, etc. You pick out the uh, disk where you want to install it. It's fairly straightforward to just say, yeah, take the disk and do with what you want. And then you hit the begin install uh, button down here. As it's installing, I found it interesting. This is the point that you create a user account and set the root password. Uh, one of the interesting things I found was if you uh, have too weak of a password, you have to hit uh, done twice. 
since this is a uh, throwaway uh, VM, you can see I didn't really uh, set all that strong of a password. And again with the user account creation. There are some advanced things you can set like what uh, user ID or group ID, uh, that you're a member of wheel or etc. And then you just wait for the install to finish and then hit reboot. On first startup I did find it interesting that uh, you had to accept the license rather than accepting the license during install. Don't worry it's not that painful of a license. Basically you're just saying that there is no warranties or guarantees and that it's under GPL2. No surprises here really. And then you're in the login screen. And then here are some uh, extra documentation around uh, Builda, Podman, and uh, all of the rest, just in case you want to dive a little bit deeper. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed uh, today's presentation.